Well, good morning. Good morning. And I want to begin by thanking Speaker Mariano and Senate President Spilka for <coughs> prioritizing this critically important piece of legislation. The Lieutenant Governor and I were just talking and she remarked how, you know, this is this is a law that really touches the heart in a lot of people's lives. And uh, so we're, we're uh, grateful to the work of the legislature um, on this, and that includes, of course, members of the conference committee, Leader Peisch, Rep. Kane, our Elder Affairs Committee Chairs, Senator Pat Jalen, and Representative Tom Stanley. Also, um, thank you to Leader Tarr for joining us. All of our legislative partners, we have many who are with us. Senator Sear, Chair of Public Health, Leader Frank Moran, Representative Unterhoven, Representative Lipper Garabedian, Rep. Rep Barber, Rep. Mortori, Rep. Chicolo, uh, uh, Rep. Decker, um, and I'm sure there are others who will be named and recognized um, as we see them. But um, I also want to thank and welcome all of the members of our team, the administration, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kate Walsh, our uh, Commissioner of Public Health, Dr. Robbie Goldstein, Assistant Secretary for Mass Health, Mike Levine, Acting Secretary for Elder Affairs, Robin Lipson. We're joined as well by healthcare leaders and advocates, including Steve Walsh of the Mass Health and Hospital Association, Laura Pellegrini of the Mass Association of Health Plans, President Elisa Sherman of the Leading Age Massachusetts Coalition, Tara Gregorio of the Mass Senior Care Association, Hannah Friggen of the Healthcare of Healthcare for All, and Chris Palamas of the Disability Policy Consortium. And thank you to all the families, um, the providers, the individuals who are here today and also just out there across this great state impacted um, by the system and worked really hard through a lot of great advocacy and ideas to make this happen. It's great. It's, um, as I said, a, a law that is about one of the most important things we do in government, which is taking care of people. We have the best health care in the country. We have the highest rate of health care insurance coverage in the nation. Uh, but that didn't just happen. It, it, it took work, and it took work by a lot of people over many, many years. Um, and it will continue to take work, work and, uh, and focus and continued collaboration. We know that uh, a few things. The, uh, the subject of this, this legislation involves some of the most trying, most complex, the most challenging uh, decisions uh, that, that families have to make um, and work through. And we think this is going to make a real difference in people's lives. Um, we also know that, um, you know, no family, no family should have to be forced to go bankrupt just to provide care to their loved one. No family should be worried about the care that their loved one is receiving. And no elderly person, person with a disability in this great state should be shut out from care. And in order to provide that quality care, we also know that facilities um, need to be resourced, staff needs to be supported. And that's also what this does. We need to make sure that we are providing world-class care at every stage of life for every family, for every person in this state. It's a complex system, as we know, and there are uh, real challenges, but it's this kind of broad collaboration that, uh, that gets us to this point with this great piece of legislation, and again, grateful to our legislative leadership for what they have delivered, and recognizing Rep. Don Wong, who's also here with us this morning. Um, this legislation tackles a range of things, okay? First of all, it importantly limits a state recovery to the federal minimum, and it ends a state recovery for those receiving common health or PCA access. I think that's a matter of... <laughs> I see you, Bill Henning. Um, I see a lot of smiles on people's faces. This is a a matter of fairness and, and justice. So we thank you to, to everybody who, uh, who brought this forward. Um, it also requires our Department of Public Health to inspect long-term care assisted living facilities annually just to make sure that they're meeting the standards that families deserve. 
It funds the training and expansion of the skilled, caring workforce of nurses and nursing assistants out there. And it ensures that there are a range of inclusive options available to meet diverse needs, and that every one of these options will be met with high quality standards. Fundamentally, it allows our aging residents, our residents with disabilities, uh, our parents, children, grandchildren, to live with greater peace, right? Understanding and knowing that things are gonna be better off for their loved ones. Um, and it ensures as well that our hardworking providers, and again, shout out to all of our caregivers. You know, my mom was a nurse and I, and, and used to care for patients private duty oftentimes, and I just thank you to all of our caregivers who have worked through and done so much. In the end, uh, this is about taking care of people. This is who we are in Massachusetts. It's a value, it's our North Star, and so it's an honor to be able to be here today, and I'd like to um, invite up to the podium speaker, Ron Mariano. Th thank you, Governor. Uh, you think it's easy to get a conference committee report done? I wear the scars. Now, this is, this is a direct result of my uncoordination and inability to climb a flight of stairs. Uh, but anyway, I'm happy to be here uh, for this momentous occasion, uh, something that I listed as a priority when the session began. And I want to thank Representative Stanley and, and Senator Jalen for their commitment to seeing this through to the end. <clears throat> They, they have systematically addressed the major concerns that I've heard over the last four or five years. This is truly a game changer in an industry that is becoming more and more important to our healthcare system daily. As we look at what's going on in the hospitals, the reduction in a couple of hospitals, we need the ability to move people into safe, secure, clean, healthy situations. And that's what this bill is intended to deliver to our seniors. And that is probably the main reason why it was such an important push. As the baby boomers, of which I am an active one, uh, I'm really covering all my bets because uh, I want this thing looking good by the time I get there. And I have my own key to a couple, so I'm, I'm lucky. As, as the industry is changing, the family-run nursing homes are disappearing, and corporate control is taking over. And with that, we lose the attention the detail that we always got from the family-controlled nursing homes. So this bill becomes more and more important by making us go in and evaluate the treatment that the seniors are getting. That to me is probably one of the biggest things in this bill, and it doesn't seem like much when you read the little write-up in the bill, but to me it's a game changer. We want to ensure that the patients in these homes are getting first-rate care, they're getting their medicines delivered properly and in the right doses, and their care and, and of cleanliness of their rooms is first-rate. All of this is a necessity, and we can't take the chance of our standards eroding with the new changes in ownership. So to me, the bill is extremely important as we enter into a new relationship with nursing homes and, and assisted living, uh, of, of which I am extremely happy that this bill is going to get this whole new looking industry and, and off on the right foot and give us some confidence. But we are not done. We're going to watch and make sure 
that the things in this bill are done and done the way we intended them to be done. So um, I don't know what Tom thinks of that, but <laughs> well, I'm not going to have any more fights with him. So <laughs> with, with that, yeah. I guess would I turn it over to the Senate President? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Great to hear all of you. Great to see all of you as fall is coming upon us. I haven't given up on summer yet. It's going to be warm today, so get outside and enjoy it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for your leadership on these areas and your administration. Uh, thank you, Senator Jalen, uh, for being such a champion in the Senate. Thank you, uh, Rep. Yes. Thank you, Rep. Stanley. I also want to thank. Chair Rodericks uh, for his assistance on this, Senator O'Connor, and I would like to acknowledge Senator Comerford, who has been a champion for the state. Yes. For a state recovery reform, she kept on putting that in all of our ears, so thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker Mariano, for your leadership as well. Secretary Walsh, Acting Secretary Lipson, Commissioner Goldstein, and all of the advocates and industry partners that are here. I look out on so many different sectors from nursing homes and assisted living and disability groups and elder uh, uh, sectors and all of the sectors that are so impacted by this and all of our families, as a family member, uh, getting older is something like paying taxes we can't get away from. It is going to happen, and we are all impacted and affected by this. And it was so important to make sure that their effect, effect and impact was positive, and that's why this bill is so critical. Nursing homes, assisted living, long-term care facilities are frankly fundamental to the fabric of our state. They are places where our family members and friends go when they have high-quality health care challenges and they may need to live with that those challenges they'll be living with for the rest of their lives. Today we celebrate a bill that will bring renewed confidence and a fresh perspective to people receiving care at these facilities. These are our family members, friends, neighbors. Uh, these are everybody, as I said, that we know. Um, these will help not only the individuals, but the families to know that with this reform, with this change, these changes in the law, families can have peace of mind when their loved ones go to these facilities to know that we as a state have made the needed reforms. We'll be watching to make sure those needed reforms take place. We will be paying attention. Um, and we know that all of you want to do We know that the providers, all of you, want to do what's right for our loved ones. So this will help give direction, support, and, and uh, clarity, hopefully. And it will clearly improve the care for our older adults and offer them support to the workforce that cares for them. We have a caregiving crisis, not only, I mean, not only Massachusetts, across the country. Caregivers need support. Providers need support as well, too. And we need to protect the civil rights of our older citizens, especially the LGBTQ community in these facilities. And it gives the Attorney General tools 
to weed out bad actors. I know all of you support that as well, those that are not delivering the care that our family members deserve. So, Governor, thank you for your signature. It's a very important signature, I have to say. And, Mr. Speaker, once again, thank you for your partnership and collaboration. When we work together, we can make a difference in countless of lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, Madam President and, and Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, so much, of, so much of what goes into this comes directly. We're all beholden to our constituents and the voices out there and, and the people who present the problems that we're here collectively to, to solve. And, you know, I just want to say for a second, I'm really proud of our state. Uh, people should feel good about our state. We were number one in education, number one in innovation. We were just ranked the number one place to have a baby the number one place to raise a family. We've always been number one in health care, including from the days that we pioneered universal access to health care. And as I said earlier, we're number one in health care insurance coverage. Today, Massachusetts leads once again because there is a caregiving crisis around this country. And I'm just so delighted to see Massachusetts once again step to the forefront of doing what needs doing to make sure that our families have peace, have greater financial security and stability and can plan, that our providers and our caregivers are supported. And so again, once again, grateful to the legislature for making this happen um, and grateful to all who came forward with their stories. And so we're gonna, I think, appropriately close with comments from Elisa Sherman, who is president of Leading Age Massachusetts. We thank you and all who are made this possible today. Thank you so much, Governor Healy. It is my great pleasure to be with you all today to mark this extraordinary milestone in our ongoing efforts to ensure that older adults in Massachusetts receive the high quality, compassionate care they deserve. I'm honored to stand here on behalf of Leading Age Massachusetts and our membership of not-for-profit providers who are committed to building a future where all older adults and persons with disabilities can live in age-friendly communities and have access to the care and services they need when they need them in the place they call home. This legislation, now law, represents a historic step in strengthening our aging services system for the thousands of older adults and persons with disabilities in need of long-term care in the Commonwealth. It takes a comprehensive and multifaceted approach to ensuring quality, including important new provisions for transparency and oversight. It takes strong steps towards developing the workforce that is truly the backbone of our long-term care system providing new tools and resources to recruit, support, and develop the dedicated and compassionate professionals who are essential to the future of aging services here in Massachusetts. And the law also advances innovation and person-centered care and acknowledges the critical role that assisted living plays in supporting older adults and their families here in the Commonwealth. The health and viability of our entire aging services system, including our home and community-based service system, and as we've seen, our healthcare system at large depends heavily upon the availability of strong, high-quality long-term care facilities. And this law goes a long way towards ensuring our aging services system is available to meet the needs and preferences of all residents of the Commonwealth who need it. I want to extend my deepest thanks to Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, to our legislative leaders, including Speaker Mariano, Senate President Spilka, uh, and so many others who have been named already, and of course, an enormous thanks to the chairs of the Elder Affairs Committee, Chairwoman Jalen, Chairman Stanley, and their staff, who have worked tirelessly to make this legislation a reality. Their commitment to strengthening our long-term care communities will make a profound and lasting difference in the lives of Massachusetts residents who need them. So on behalf of Leading Age Massachusetts, I want to thank you all for your leadership and partnership in this vital work. And we look forward to the work ahead with the Healy administration, with Secretary Walsh and Acting Secretary uh, uh, Lipson, Commissioner Goldstein, uh, and others, uh, to implement this law and build a future where every older adult in Massachusetts can age with the dignity, 
care, and respect they deserve. And now it's my great honor to turn it back to Governor Healy. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Swiram. We're going to go sign the bill. And uh, again, I just want to shout out and thank our HHS team because you, um, I get to do the signing and say some words, but you guys do all the work. And uh, there's a lot of work in terms of implementation. So to Mike Levine, we know what's uh, on your plate. Thank you for the work you do. And to Robin Lipson <laughs> and to Dr. Goldstein and Kate Walsh, um, thank you to you and your teams as well. All right, let's go sign a bill.